In this video, I'm going to show you how to write the electron configurations of lithium, beryllium, and boron. In order to be able to follow along with this video, you need to have a pretty good understanding of quantum numbers. You also need to know the difference between diamagnetic and paramagnetic, and also at least be introduced to the concept of the Pauli exclusion principle. So let's get started with lithium. Before we write an electron configuration, the first thing we need to know is how many electrons are in the atom. And the fastest way to get that information is by looking at the periodic table. So here's lithium, and we can see that lithium's atomic number is three, which means that it has three protons and also that it has three electrons. So that's how many electrons that we're working with here. And now what we're going to do is write a set of quantum numbers for each one of those three electrons following the Pauli exclusion principle and also remembering that electron configurations are always written for the ground state, meaning that we want to come up with the lowest possible set of uh, lowest energy sets of quantum numbers. So that means we want to start in the n equals one level and when n equals one, L equals zero and M sub L equals zero and m sub s could either be one half or it could be minus one half. And so that's a set of quantum numbers oops, for our first electron. And then for our second electron, we're gonna put that second electron also in n equals one, l equals zero. And this one is going to have the opposite spin. So this one will be uh, m sub s negative one half. Now we need to find a place for our third electron and there's no other um, n equals one options for us. So we've, we've exhausted every possible combination of quantum numbers when n equals one, which means that we have to move up to the next energy level. The next energy level is n equals two. Now when n equals two, we have a couple of options for L. L could either be zero or it could be one. Zero corresponds to the s orbital and one corresponds to the p orbital. And which one of those should we choose? Fortunately, in terms of energy, the L equals zero is lower energy than one, which is lower ener energy than two, and so on and so forth. Um, so we're gonna go with L equals one or L equals zero, which is lowest energy. And when L equals zero, M sub L is restricted to zero, and M sub S could either be plus one half or minus one half. We'll just go with one half. So there's a set of quantum numbers for all three of our electrons. Now let's go ahead and make some orbital diagrams. Let's do this in both forms. So we're going to do the form that shows us the relative energy like this. And then we're also going to do the box diagram as well. I'll do the box diagram down here. In the box diagram, remember we draw one box for each orbital that we're working with. And up here, we can see that both of these electrons here, because they are n equals one and L equals zero, these are one S electrons. Again, n equals one shows up right here and L equals zero is this part, the S. And our third electron, this one is in n equals two, L equals zero. So that's going to be the two S orbital. So when we're doing a box diagram, we need two boxes. We need one box for one S and we need another box for two S. Same with our energy diagram. We need two lines. We need one line for the one S orbital and we need another line to represent the two S orbital. And now we fill in our boxes or our lines with arrows to represent the electrons. The 1s orbital has two electrons in it, one of them plus one half and the other one minus one half, and we represent that with two arrows, one up and one down. Our 2s orbital has only one electron. We could draw that with an up arrow or a down arrow, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that we only put one arrow in there. And let's do the same over here for our energy diagram. Two electrons in the 1s orbital, one electron in the 2s orbital. And let's go ahead and write out the electron configuration for this. Remember that's an abbreviation of the box diagram or the energy diagram. So in our electron configuration, we're going to write 1s for the 1s orbital with two electrons and then 2s, one. And again, this is telling us that we have two electrons in the 1s orbital and we have one electron in the 2s orbital. So this is our electron configuration and that is what it represents. 
Let's classify lithium as diamagnetic or paramagnetic. I've given you a reminder down here that diamagnetic means that all the electrons are in pairs. We can see here that our 2s electron is not in pairs, which means that this is paramagnetic because our 2s electron is unpaired. Now, one of the things that we see um, illustrated in the electron configuration for lithium is something called the Aufbau principle. The Aufbau principle, which I'm going to spell that out, Aufbau. The Aufbau principle says that as we are assigning quantum numbers to our electrons and filling them up in the energy level diagram and the box diagram, we will always completely fill an orbital in order of low energy to high energy. So basically that means in this in this atom, we completely filled the 1s orbital before we put any electrons up in the 2s orbital. The um, anti of that, the opposite of that, would be if we had come up with an electron configuration like this, where we left the 1s orbital only partially filled and skipped up to the 2s to fill it the rest of the way, and that's not how it works. So the Aufbau principle says that we need to fill up the low energy orbitals before we move up to the high energy orbitals. So let's um, continue on and look at our next example, which is going to be beryllium. Beryllium is four electrons. And now, um, instead of assigning quantum numbers to all of beryllium's electrons, because I feel like we've done a lot of examples of that, let's just go straight to filling up energy diagrams and box diagrams and writing the electron configuration. So over here, let's make an energy diagram. And down here, let's make our box diagram. So typically, um, you don't do both energy and box diagrams, but I'm showing you both because I want you to have the option to use whichever one you would prefer. So for our beryllium, with four electrons, as you can imagine, this is going to be really similar to what we did for lithium, but we've just, just got that fourth electron that we're going to fill in. So without assigning quantum numbers, we're going to say we've got four electrons to work with. And I, I feel like it's kind of easier to do this with the energy diagram um, bottom to top approach. We've got four electrons to work with. And what we're going to do is completely fill up 1s, low energy, and then we're going to move on to 2s, higher energy. And that's following the Aufbau principle. So we're going to say we've got four electrons. We're going to go 1, 2, and now we've completely filled the 1s. And then we move up three, four. And we can do the same thing over here in our box diagram. This in the box diagram, basically energy goes this way. We're gonna completely fill up the one S, one, two. And now we move on to two S, three, four. And again, here what we're doing is illustrating the Aufbau principle, filling, completely filling the one S before we move on up to the two S. Looking at the energy diagram or the box diagram, we can use this information to write the electron configuration. We can see that in the 1s orbital, we have two electrons. In the 2s orbital, we also have two electrons. So this is the electron configuration for beryllium. And let's go ahead and classify this. Is beryllium diamagnetic or paramagnetic? Well, that information we get by looking at the energy diagram. We can see that all the electrons are paired. So this is diamagnetic. Let's look at another example, one more example in this video. So now we're moving on to boron. Boron has five electrons. And again, we're not going to assign quantum numbers. We're just gonna jump straight to the energy diagrams and box diagrams. So when we're writing these electron configurations, a lot of times, like when we really understand the Aufbau principle, it's easy to create, basically what I'm gonna say is kind of like a skeleton of orbitals, like what I'm doing right now, and fill those orbitals in following the Aufbau principle, filling those orbitals in with the correct number of electrons. Once we get them all filled in, then we can read the electron configuration off of it. 
Now, we know that this or this, this is not going to be sufficient for the five electrons in boron. We completely filled the 1s and 2s with our beryllium's electrons, and so that means we need more orbitals up here. We need more orbitals to work with. So what comes next in terms of energy after the 2s? Well, in a few videos past, I gave you this chart, told you to not memorize it. I still don't want you to memorize it because I'm going to teach you a trick. But this chart gives the relative energy of all of the orbitals. So, so far we've only dealt with 1s and 2s. The next highest is the 2p. Now we only have one more electron to deal with, with, with boron, so we really don't need all of these 2p orbitals. We're not going to need all of them, but the 2p orbitals, they're like um, joined at the hip. You can't take one and leave the other two. So what we're going to do is bring all three of these 2p orbitals into the mix. We're going to put all three of them. And remember that all of the 2p orbitals have the exact same energy, so they're drawn side by side, indicating that they are equivalent in terms of energy. For the box diagram, I'm going to need to make myself some more space here. So I'm going to put my boxes for my 2p orbitals. I really um, think I just need to redraw my 2p, my box diagram, because I made it too big. So my 1s, and then my 2s, and then my 2p. And so when we have this, like notice that I'm trying to make a slightly larger gap in between the different types of orbitals and a smaller gap in between the similar 2p orbitals. And I'm just writing 2p underneath all three of these. They all have the same name. So whether we're using the box diagram or the electron configuration, or excuse me, the energy diagram, we're going to fill it up following the Aufbau principle, counting up to five. Five electrons are going to go in here. So we first completely fill the 1s. That's one, two. Now we move up, completely fill the 2s, that's number 3, number 4, and now we can move up, put one electron in a 2p orbital, it does not matter which one you choose, just put one electron in there somewhere. Now let's do the same thing for our boxes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like I said, I like this format uh, better because it's easier for me to see the distinction between energy when they're stacked on top of each other. When they're all written side to side, I just feel like it's not quite as good of a visual. So now we can read from this, we can read what our electron configuration is. We can see in the 1s, we have two electrons. So we have 1s2, and then in the 2s, we have two electrons. 2s2, and in the 2p, we have one electron, 2p1. That's the electron configuration for boron. Is it dia or paramagnetic? Well, diamagnetic means that all the electrons are paired, and we can see that we have an unpaired electron here. So that means that this is paramagnetic.